Our series, A More Perfect Union, aims to show that what unites us as Americans is far greater than what divides us. Last summer, when thousands took to the streets to protest the murder of George Floyd, many businesses started hanging plywood over their windows and doors. You recall that. Soon after, murals appeared on the plywood, illustrating the demand for change in one of the largest protest movements in American history. Nancy Chen shows us now how that art has found new life and new meaning. I wanted this particular piece to encourage little black boys when they walk by, like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm represented. As protests filled the streets of Chicago last summer, plywood blanketing storefronts became a canvas of sorts for Southside native Bear Keithley. How did this really take off? You know, when people look at all the abandoned businesses. It was, you know, citywide, nationwide. But a lot of us have grown up in those neighborhoods looking like that. The son of a police officer, Keith Lee's also a self-taught artist and co-created an initiative called Paint the City. We had over 60 artists join our efforts from the north side to the west side to the east side, south side, all, all, all the sides. <laughs> The art was their way to both support the Black Lives Matter movement and change the city's landscape. It's definitely a moment in history that can never be forgotten because the manuscripts are these boards. And it's very much still ongoing. We made it our mission to heal the city through art. That mission is taking a new form. This Saturday on Juneteenth, the colorful plywood that once symbolized a closed community will go on display at Chicago's DuSable Museum of African American History. Even the protesters knew not to vandalize the artwork. They just left it alone. It speaks to the cohesiveness that not only were we doing this in Chicago, but there were other people doing it around the country. Inset a little more. In New York, sculptures created from salvaged boards were unveiled last month as public art in each borough. As you were looking around the city last summer, what did you see? Uh, a whole lot of plywood, that's for sure. Manhattan yeah. artist Neil Hamamoto uh, and his nonprofit Worthless Studios offered to remove plywood from businesses for free. As the protests subsided, that plywood was just being thrown away and we were sort of trying to come in as a solution for them to recycle and upcycle that material. Worthless Studios selected five New York City artists for the Plywood Protection Project, Tanda Francis among them. This is it, this is Rocket Black. You can see right here, like there's graffiti on the piece still. Her 360 degree sculpture in Queens celebrates black identity. The silhouette portrays a goddess inspired by a rocket propelling up. So where did the idea for Rocket Black come from? The work that I do is like using the color black and, and making it known to be grand and beautiful and a divine presence. Artists reshaping the remnants of a reckoning and telling a story in their vision. What can art do to get people to pay attention? It has the power for me to reach you and I don't even have to see you. I don't even have to speak to you, but you can see a piece that any artist has done and you can just be moved by it. For CBS This Morning, Nancy Chen, Chicago. That's so true, and it can literally be a single image that can really resonate with you and bring something home. That's why I love what they're doing. And it's so beautiful how art can be born out of tension, out of yeah, disappointment. Absolutely. And those pieces were incredible. That rocket. And essentially debris, you know? Yeah. I mean, that plywood which we all came to see and seemed to represent how much distress there was yeah. is now a whole symbol of hope. It is debris no more.